now. But it is not just just say, okay, may supa, I want my supplier to join. It's not that simple. Because the big enterprise, he is duty bound to assist the, the small enterprise the, the, because he has to improve his supplier. And uh, he is also joining, and he sometimes he's providing some, uh, for the lecture, he's providing his place, and uh, he has to make sure that he can monitor his supplier, that the supplier is really following what we are trying to teach him. So he has a role, but not necessarily a big company. It is, it should be big brother, small brother, but in the ILO, that's taboo already. You cannot say big brother, small brother, because that's gender sensitive. <laughs> because of the word brother. So we have to change. Okay, if you don't like brother, okay, we say oh, big enterprise, small enterprise. Yes, so. Sir, we have a question over here. My name is Rudy Galang. That way, how I'm wondering, how can you enhance competition between the small enterprises? If the big enterprise will uh, enroll only one supplier, that means siya na lang magiging supplier mo. Eh, to be, for them to become more competitive, and the big enterprise also to become more competitive, you should enhance the com competition between the small enterprises. Actually, we, we are not encouraging the, the buyer acting as the big enterprise to have only one supplier. Actually, we encourage competition and he should have more suppliers. So that's the, we, we are just helping the supplier, but to, it's not limited to one supplier. The more suppliers, the better for us. Mm. And of course, better for the buyer. I'm Dr. Miel from an MB health student. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just curious about when the small enterprises resisted change, and you mentioned about supplier squeeze. Is it threatening? What kind of squeeze is that? Would you like to? Uh, yeah, the supplier can say, if you, if you don't change, if you don't uh, make improvements, I will not buy from you. Yeah, really threatening him. I want you to improve because I want uh, my suppliers to have a better service to me. So if you value me as a buyer, I think you should improve and take advantage of this one. So they are really, of course, not saying what I said is too much, you know? No, not that much. They said, you see, I am buying from you because I expect you to be a good supplier. And this one will help you become a better supplier. So for our uh, long rela longer relationship, maybe better you join. That's exactly what they are. Only I try to shortcut that threatening. No, no, not that way. Um, my question is, in downsizing, how do you address the concerns, economic, psychological, of the employees that will be removed, and how do you maintain the morale of those that will remain in the company? In downsizing, how do you address the concerns, economic, psychological, of, the em of those employees that will be removed, and how do you maintain the morale of those that will remain in the company? Well, 
basically, when you downsize, there are two ways to do it, or two situations why you downsize. One is you downsize a department, but you still give them some other job in other department. So you downsize a certain department, you move them. One is your business become bigger, so you can still take them. Some is actually you really have to downsize part with them. Of course, you, you, have, you should have a process. Which one will you part ways? And you cannot just part ways. There should be something for them. And sometimes they, you give also some program wherein they, they can go to, for another kind of business. So, so, so there are so many ways to do it. And uh, so there is no uh, single remedy or single solution. There are combinations. But there are sometimes that uh, really part ways is the hardest thing. My question is, what do you mean program that will move them to another kind of business, program that will move them to another company that's not related, that's not your, within your... No, sometimes you, you like other companies, they have done. Before they downsize, they, they try to have these uh, cooperatives or uh, these... Uh, what's your, 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 your livelihood, livelihood program. So they try to train them in a li livelihood program, something like that. Some are doing that. I'm Anna Galang um, from Ang Tagalawa. It's uh, for Lake Management, an NGO. Um, I was wondering if uh, your organization would also be involved in um, educating companies um, with regards to environment. Uh, isn't it that we have ISO? We have standards for um, companies. And I think, uh, I, I'm not... <laughs> in manufacturing, I think it's voluntary on the part of the companies. It's not really required for every company in a sector to um, be accredited or to have an ISO uh, accreditation. I've seen it uh, for hospitals, but I'm not sure if in the manufacturing or in service companies, ISO standards are promoted or um, encouraged. But perhaps for environment, there's also an ISO um, standard for um, the way a company uh, controls or manages its effect on the environment, uh, specifically, let's say, waste uh, management. Uh, is your organization, um, or could it work with DNR uh, or source funds from DNR or an, uh, other companies, let's say, abroad, uh, to conduct training for for companies with respect to how they um, manage their waste, uh, among other things, for environmental uh, improvement. Are you referring when you said your company? Are you referring to to the association or to our company? To the to the to to fund EIPC. No, actually, the EIPC is focused right now on three. The five S, the plant layout, and the process flow. Those are the things only that we engage ourselves. Now, of course, when we talk on the five S, automatically, it is the about environment is being, uh, one, being touched on that. But it's not, the focus is not really the environment, but you cannot do away with that. It will be part of your 5S project.